the Muni Viscometer, a timeless yet still very relevant device in the rubber lab. Hello, my rubber hearts. Today, we are diving into one of the most fundamental tools in the rubber and polymer industry, the Muni Viscometer. This machine is at the heart of quality control, research, and production in the rubber world. If you have ever wondered how rubber manufacturers measure the processability of a compound before it hits the production line, this episode is for you. We are going to break down how the Muni Viscometer works, what its measurements mean, and how we use this data in real-life production. We will also get into some common testing terms like 1 plus 4 minutes, T5 and T35, so you will understand what these values on a test certificate are telling you. Now let's get started. The Muni Viscometer was invented back in the 1930s by Melvin Muni, a key figure in the development of rubber testing methods. He created this device because the rubber industry needed a standardized way to measure the viscosity or thickness of uncured rubber. Before this, rubber processing was unpredictable because manufacturers didn't know how their compounds would behave until they were already being processed. Mooney's device changed that, giving the industry a way to test and predict how rubber would flow during mixing, extrusion, and molding. So how does it work? The Muni viscometer measures viscosity, which is the resistance of rubber to flow when it's heated and compressed. The unit of measurement it uses is called the Muni unit, or MU. One Muni unit corresponds to 8.3 newton meters of torque applied by the rubber on the rotor. This is a globally standardized conversion, allowing for consistent reading across different machines. The Muni viscometer consists of a heated chamber with a rotating metal disc called a rotor. The chamber is typically set between 100 and 200 degrees Celsius, depending on the type of rubber being tested. A rubber sample is placed inside the chamber where it gets compressed around the rotor. As the rotor spins at a consistent speed, usually two revolutions per minute, the machine measures the torque required to keep the rotor turning. The more the rubber resists the rotation, the higher the torque and the higher the Muni viscosity reading. Maintaining precise and stable temperature control is critical because even a small variation, just 1 or 2 degrees Celsius, can significantly affect the viscosity reading. The chamber's temperature is controlled using precision thermostats and calibrated probes to ensure test accuracy. There are two types of rotors used in a Muni viscometer, the small one and the large one. The large rotor is the industry standard and is typically used for general purpose tests like measuring the Muni viscosity of master batches and final rubber compounds. It covers a large surface area, generating more torque and making it easier to test highly viscous compounds like natural rubber, carbon black field mixes or dense elastomers. The small rotor is used for low viscosity polymers or lightly filled compounds. Its smaller surface area provides more accurate readings for softer materials that don't generate as much torque. In a research and development setting, switching between the small and large rotors can provide a more comprehensive view of a material's processability, depending on the intended application. Now, if you have ever looked at a rubber test certificate, you've probably seen something like ML 1 plus 4 at 100 degrees C. This is the standard way viscosity is measured using the Muni viscometer. The M stands for Muni and the L stands for large rotor, which is typically used in standard tests. The 1 plus 4 means the test takes place over a total of 5 minutes. The first minute is called the conditioning time, where the sample stabilizes at the set temperature of 100 degrees Celsius in this example. After that first minute, the actual measurement takes place over the next four minutes, giving us the final result. This five-minute standard was established through calibration studies showing that one minute is enough time for the rubber to reach a stable temperature, while four minutes provides consistent viscosity data before the compound begins to cure. If a test uses a different conditioning or measuring times, this deviation must be clearly stated on the certificate, as changing these parameters affects the result. 
This device isn't just used for measuring viscosity. It is also used to measure scorch time, which tells us how long rubber can stay at a certain temperature before it starts curing or setting. When we do a scorch test, the machine measures how long it takes for the rubber to reach specific levels of torque increase, showing when curing begins. You'll often see terms like T5 and T35 on a test certificate. T5 is the time in minutes it takes for the torque to increase by 5 Mooney units from the baseline reading, indicating when the curing process starts. T35 is the time in minutes it takes for the torque to increase by 35 Mooney units, indicating the compound has entered deep curing and is approaching its final state. The shorter the T5 time, the faster the rubber begins curing. This data helps set machine speeds in production, ensuring that rubber isn't left in an extruder or calendar for too long. Sometimes testing goes above the standard temperature of 100 degrees. But why test at higher temperatures? Testing at elevated temperatures like 120 or even 150 degrees Celsius simulates real world production conditions such as extrusion, calendaring, or injection molding. Higher temperatures lower viscosity, making rubber flow more easily, but they also accelerate scorch and cure reactions. This helps predict how the compound will behave during these intense production conditions. Another test that can be performed with the Muni viscometer is the Muni relaxation test. Advanced viscometers can perform a Muni relaxation test. After measuring viscosity, the rotor stops spinning, and the machine measures how quickly the rubber relaxes or releases the store torque. This reveals the elastic recovery and stress relaxation properties of the compound, which are critical for products like automotive seals or vibration damping components. In the rubber industry, the viscometer is essential for quality control. It is used at multiple stages of production to ensure consistency, starting with the raw polymers themselves. For example, a rubber producer might check the Muni viscosity of natural or synthetic rubber shipments to ensure that raw materials meet specifications before production even begins. It's also used during the mixing process. When a batch of rubber is mixed, the Muni viscometer can check that the final compound has the correct viscosity before it's sent to extrusion or molding. In R&D, it's used constantly when developing new formulations, helping scientists fine-tune recipes before they scale up to full production. So there you have it, the Muni viscometer, a crucial tool for anyone working with rubber. It gives us essential data on viscosity and scorch time, helping us predict how rubber compounds will behave in real-world processing. Without it, making tires, hoses, seals, and countless other rubber products would be a guessing game. Thanks for tuning into my rubber heart. If you found this useful, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell icon so you never miss an episode. Got a topic you want us to explore? Drop it in the comments. I will see you next time.